English players in that one. That's BBC One, 10.45. OK, that's it. We'll be back for the last focus of the year next week. But for now, it's back to Steve. Thanks, Gary. Enjoy the wedding. Before we press on with a grandstand afternoon that has a pretty comprehensive range of sporting action, here's something that belongs in a kind of rugby league focus. The Silcat Challenge Cup is at its earlier stage, and we're going to follow its progress with a kind of Road to Wembley regular feature. 48 amateur teams contested the opening round last weekend, and the start of the trail for us and for Ray French was a fairly unlikely rugby league location. <laughs> Canary Wharf, the centre of London's financial markets, attracts intelligent, eager, ambitious young men. And, surprisingly, equally ambitious rugby league players, the London Scholars. There's quite a few City boys playing for us at the moment, along with a few uh, foreign stars, but uh, there's quite a few people down from, from the north, come down to London, obviously, want to carry on playing rugby league. We were established in 1995, and what we were was an all-boys uh, side, first one in student rugby league. And what it was, there was nowhere for us to play when we came down to London after we'd played uh, rugby league at university. So we set the side up, there was about eight of us who decided to do it. And we set the side up and we immediately had two sides because there were so many players who wanted to play. And in our first season we won the first division and second division of the London League, which was a bit of an achievement really. And we knew we wanted a bit of a winner then. Number 12. 48 of the 62 amateur teams in the Silkcut Challenge Cup were placed in the draw for the first round. 23, London Scholars. 42, at home to Thato Heath. We've played for the last three years, unsuccessfully may I add. We had a narrow defeat last year, 12-10, and we hope to reverse that. We sort of threw the game away, but we're undefeated at home this season so far, so we want to keep that record going. At the New River Stadium, Haringey, the stresses and strains of the working week on the stock markets are exchanged for the pressures of the dressing room before a cup tie. Well, we've got the ball on it on the first one, we know what we're doing. And on the second, we hit the ball up, and on the second, we mash him in defence. Talking all the time. Freezing temperatures and biting winds failed to deter the scholars from taking an early lead. As early as the seventh minute, Alfred Patillo set up the position. Then, a superb solo effort from lively standoff, Old Ibrahim provided the opening four points. 20 minutes later, and a cup shot looked to be on the cards, when the 37 years old Bob Brown touched down at the corner following a magnificent eight-man handling movement. A third try at the opening of the second half delighted the Scholars' supporters. But a try from Tato Heat's pacey centre Gary Wellsby ensured a tense final five minutes. Perhaps a little too tense for Scholars' over-enthusiastic chairman Hector McNeil, who was promptly dispatched from the touchline by referee Dave Ansell. Fortunately for the Londoners, a tactical kick and a favourable bounce allowed a grateful Norman Callaghan to race away for that decisive try. Much to the delight of his teammates and the supporters in the stands. Victory secured and celebrations in the winners' dressing room. Oh, look at this, mate. Oh, I, think it's, I think it's broken, boys. <laughs> Someone's going to have to give them a kiss of life. <laughs> really expect that London Scholars could win a game like this against a team as renowned as Tato Heath? Yeah, I really did. The, um, the work we put in over the summer was just like unbelievable. Um, all season we've played well, put some really good hard performances in and uh, everybody in that changing room before we went out today knew we had the capability of winning. 
Um, we put everything together and we won, and I'm really proud of that. This meant a lot to the boys and the team. Uh, the Challenge Cup obviously is very important to them as an amateur club, and to take it out there to Thada Heath today was a big performance for them. How do you motivate an amateur team when you know you're not really going to appear at Wembley? Well, I guess uh, the whole aim of the club here is that it is an amateur club and we aim to have fun, make, make the most of it for the players, get the players involved, the players' families involved, and we just try and uh, just try to make it as fun as possible, and when you win, it's fun. And the chairman was up for it, even getting sent off the pitch. Yeah, get a bit too carried away, but it's been a long time coming, I think that has, you know, so I mean, all in all, it's not so bad. So where do you go from here, then? Well, I think, you know, ultimately, uh, you know, we've got to make the decision, we've got to push up the table, you know, we're still in there with a chance of promotion, and I think that's what we've got to aim for. We're always going to be an amateur side, though, but we want to be one of the best in the country. And we'll be following the progress of the Scholars and following the subsequent progress of the Challenge Cup through the variety of locations that it takes us throughout the winter. Round two of the competition is next weekend. Grandstand this afternoon, a similar variety of locations. We're going racing at the clock shortly after two o'clock. But first of all, it's highlights of the second day's play in the third Ashes Test in Adelaide. A reminder of how things stood. After a sweltering first day, England had just about kept themselves in touch. Australia had the tireless Justin Langer to thank for their promising position. He registered his second test century. And Peter Such, playing his first test for four years, was England's best bowler on a day when temperatures topped 40 degrees centigrade. So, Australia resuming on 266 for four. Langer still there on 108. We're in the third over of the morning. It's Goff to Ricky Ponting. Australia having added eight runs, 274 for four.